Today we're making a dangerous and dangerously crushable beer and mead combination, also known as a braggot. Let's make an apricot braggot. So this is a hybrid beer mead combination. I've made them on the, on the channel before. You might have seen them. Um, I have a recipe I'm going to talk about. I adapted it kind of from the brew show, which is an, a good friend of mine, Trent over there. He made an apricot beer and I decided I want to try something similar. So I adapted from his recipe. I started to use honey in this because honey has to be involved for this to be considered a braggot. So we went ahead and um, got the recipe on screen, which is everything you see here. Four pounds of, I used um, Angico Blossom Honey, which is a light, bright floral honey. Four pounds of Pilsen malt, one pound of wheat white malt, um, Amarillo hops, about two, gra two grams, two ounces in total. Um, apricot puree, which of course you can use you know, chopped up apricot that's fresh or dried apricot. Either way, you want to do it. And Kvike Voss, which is a high temp fermenter. And I'll talk about how I maintain that temperature, even with it not being summertime. So there's my recipe. I am doing two things with this. I'm, with this, I made this beer mead combination. And then I'm also reviewing this all-in-one grain uh, brewing setup. So we'll talk about that kind of at the end. How did I make this brew? I got my recipe and I got about six gallons of water in my all-in-one grain brewing system up to 149 degrees for my mash temp. Then I mashed all of my grains, no honey yet, in that system for about an hour. After that hour, I went ahead and added and sparged with a little more water, so about a gallon of water on top of that to try and get even more of the grain sugars out of there. So our grand total water at this point was about seven gallons. We went ahead and brought that up to a boil. We added a three, or excuse me, one quarter ounce of Amarillo hops for about 45 minutes and then uh, three quarter ounce Amarillo hops for 15 minutes. These are all for bittering and kind of, you know, adding that side. This thing is a total of uh, about 22 IBUs. At that point, we wanted to go ahead and add our honey. So at flame out, turning off the system, I went ahead and added my four pounds of honey, mixed that all together. And once that was blended, I went ahead and took a gravity reading. So our starting gravity for this thing was 1.044. With honey, this is more than likely going to go dry to about 1.000. It's just kind of how honey works. Um, it's all fermentable. So our possible ABV on this thing is around 6. Point, uh, I guess it'd be like 5.7 or something like that. We chilled this whole beverage with our wort chiller outside. It was dark at this point because <laughs> it had been a long brew day. Um, and then we went ahead and moved it into a bucket for fermentation. So I put that into the bucket. I pitched my yeast and the yeast here with the Kvike Voss are best, they ferment best at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty high. So I had to wrap a heat wrap around the bucket, which held it at about 90, but I couldn't keep it at 95. Um, so it peaked at about 90 for the bulk of fermentation. This thing blew through fermentation. It only took about four or five days. At that point, I went ahead and added one more ounce of Amarillo hops to dry hop this thing. That sat for a day. And then here's where the danger comes in. Um, we went ahead and put it into a keg and we added our apricot puree in that keg. Now, why is that dangerous? Well, if this keg was pulled out of its cold chamber, those yeast that are still going to be in the brew are going to consume the sugars from the puree because there's sugars in there and start re-fermenting. Because they're currently setting at like 37 degrees Fahrenheit, they're not going to reactivate. This recipe is not intended for you to make with bottle, at least with my method, with bottle conditioning. I'll kind of talk about how to make a bottle conditioned version of this in a second, but with my current 
way I'm doing this, do not try to make a bottle conditioned version. Puree went in, mixed all that up, put, put it on gas for about three days at about 30 PSI. And we have, uh, it's sat for a little bit longer. We've, we have our beverage. The first few pours from this, because all of that puree, even after mixing, had fallen to the bottom, were like all just chunky and gross side. This brew is not very clear. You can see right here, it's pretty hazy. I'm honestly kind of okay with it. I kind of knew that would happen with the puree, but something to uh, consider. I didn't take a gravity reading after the apricot puree was added, so I don't know what this is at, but I do know primary fermentation was 1.044. After the primary, it was 1.000. So it, it went dry even with our grain bill being there. So how does this thing look? I think it looks obviously hazy, nice color. Uh, apricots have a nice color to them. Uh, it does, I mean, it's carbonated, obviously, it's force carved, and it tastes like it's got a, a, a warm uh, undertone of like earthy uh, honey character with that grain build being in there. There is the wheat -y side. And of course, our apricot is there, but it's not sweet. It's more kind of tart. And it's it's got a little bit of um, a little bit of bite to it. It's only about, you know, like 5.7, 6% ABV right now. So pretty low ABV. For it being three weeks old, it's pretty dang crushable. I do enjoy the hops here. I think the hops complement this pretty well. They add a bit of that earthy side, which is nice, and a little bit of fruitiness. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Amarillo hops. I think the apricot is one of those flavors that is found or perceived in uh, this, in the hop itself. So the brew itself was pretty easy to make and quick turnaround. And you can make this a, into a bottle conditioned version by doing this. Of course, you're not gonna have a keg if you're doing this, but first throw in your apricot puree. Let's say it takes five days to ferment, six days to ferment. You can go ahead and put your puree in there. It will be fermented on again, but that's okay. That's the nature of bottle carbonation. Let that set, I don't know, for a week or two. Uh, and then dry hop with your one ounce of Amarillo hops for a day or two, and then go ahead and move into a new container. Make sure there's no re more re-fermentation or fermentation's not occurring, so you can take gravity readings. And then you can go ahead and let it clear some and maybe get off of the puree, add a whatever amount of priming sugar you need using a calculator to that brew and bottle it then let them set back and you'll have a bottle conditioned version of this. I think that will work well. I don't have a bottle conditioned version to show you or to share. So that's how I made this. Now let's talk about the other half of this video. Um, I made this with a, a setup that was cheaper than normal. You know, there's a lot of really expensive all-in-one grain brewing systems out there. You got anvils, you got grain fathers, you got, uh, I don't even know what else at this point, a bunch of them, pretty expensive. There's this one called Viver, which the company reached out to me and they said, hey, we want you to review something. I was like, okay, cool. So um, I just so happened to be in the market for wanting for an all grain setup and they had one. So I used the Viver all-in-one uh, grain setup. It's like 9.2 gallons for the whole container itself. So quite a bit, it's pretty big. It only runs you up to, I think it was a little over $300 which comparable to these other setups is pretty expensive. Um, my quick rundown of this is, uh, w well, you know what's probably better? Let's go ahead and just grab it and talk about it. All right, here it is. First of all, let's talk, let's go top down. Lid, a little bit weird. It's got this up top, we'll explain in a second. I'll show you what it, what it does. But essentially there's a, a side for your sparge water. Um, works well. That's interesting though, it's got little knobs. Then inside, I've piled it all in here. So there is like a grain basket element that's right here. I had to assemble these, these come off for cleaning. So this is your mesh and it goes into this actual grain basket right here. So this is your grain basket, empty. You can see me right through that right there. And this, this bad boy sets right in like this. which is nice. So you have your basket for all of that. So you don't really get much grain problem throughout the brew. Um, there is a, <laughs> a 
pretty dinky little handle you can put here and hold it. Now I found some troubles with this guy lifting whenever it's pretty heavy, but it is okay. So you can lift out, it's not bad at all. So pretty decent actual build quality for the price, honestly. So it does have a sparge water, sparge tube or side. There's a pump on this, which is built in, which is nice. You lock this bad boy down. And essentially when you turn it on and you turn the pump on, it just runs liquid from the bottom here all the way through to the top and just keeps circulating. And that's why there, there was that hole in the, the actual lid is so that it had a place to go right there. This thing was pretty nice. It does have an on and off, or of course on and off, but also a, a flow control, which is good there. Um, and it worked well for me. Inside this thing, I'll show you. Inside of this thing, we have some mesh to help filter out any of the grain or stuff that somehow gets through the basket, which is super nice. There is this at the bottom, which is the flow control for the actual barge area, which you see like this right here. Here's your power cord. It's got a pretty nice length power cord, as you can see. And of course, got to have a place to pour from. Now this right here, I was a little worried for a while that it was going to not be great, but um, I was pretty surprised it actually sealed well, which was nice. The controls on the side, here's your on and off and your pump. You can turn those on off. As you can see here, you've got your controls. Now I have no liquid in there, so it's, it's not going to let me do anything right now, but you have ability to control your power and everything on this which is nice. So you can go power wise, you can go pretty high. I mean, I was able to kick it up 2,500 Watts, which is nice. You've got your te uh, temperature, which of course it goes up to boiling a timer, which is nice. And this gauge works pretty well, but it did take a little bit of time for me to get used to. Overall, this product's not bad. My biggest complaint with it, um, the price is pretty good. I don't have, I've used Anvil systems before I've done that stuff. So I don't necessarily, I don't, I mean, I'm not like a pro at all grain. So all grain people chill out, don't yell at me, but the system works pretty well for, for what it is about 300 something dollars for it comes with um, some nice elements to it. It's all in one. Um, <laughs> here's what I'm laughing at. Look where the logo is. This is the one thing that I'm like, y'all, this is to take this next level, center this bad boy right down the middle there. Then you'll have yourself a product that is a little bit um, nicer. It also comes with the world's largest hop spider. Look at this thing. This is my hand. This is the hop spider. That's huge. So if you're interested in that, that's helpful. Um, if you are interested in this, you can actually, uh, there's some perks and well, I say perks. There's some ways you can save some money. You can find some links and some information on screen uh, and, and in the description on how to save some money and you know, support the channel. So I uh, appreciate you watching this. This has been an apricot ale and I hope to see you in a future video. Follow the recipe below and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.